Hello everybody, this is Matt from Megala Mobile. So on the last video I got a comment from Duchess Gambit that said that this works for one enemy and if you destroy the game object the whole game falls apart. Any advice would be helpful, thanks in advance. Let's take a look. So picking up where we left off last time, we can download the Unity package and follow along. Alternatively, a completed version is also available. All the links are in the description. So first of all, to make multiple enemies work with this project, we're going to create a new script and call it enemy. The enemy script is going to be placed on the part of the enemy we want to be able to aim at, in this case, the head of the dinosaur. We're also going to create an aim manager script and that's going to go onto the player. Now within the aim manager script, we're going to need um, some arrays and some lists to handle the enemies. So first of all, we're going to create a look at enemy array and that's going to be called look at enemies and a list of game objects called the enemies list. And that's going to equal a new list of game objects just to instantiate it. We also need a public game object, closest enemy and a public float called maximum range. That's the maximum distance an enemy can be away from the player in order for the player to be able to shoot it. We're also going to create a function called void closest enemy. And we'll come back to that one in a second. First of all, let's build the list of enemies from an array of the enemies in the scene. We can do that by setting look at enemies to equal get components in children, look at enemy. Enemy array enemies in scene equals find objects of type enemy. And for each enemy script enemy in enemies in scene, the array of enemy scripts, we're going to say that enemies list dot add enemy dot game object. So what we've done there is we've built a list of the game objects of the enemies that are in the scene. That way we don't need to add tags and things like that. We can just build it from the actual game objects that are already there. Now for this uh, closest enemy function, we're going to create a float range and that's going to start off equaling the maximum range, but we'll change that in a second. And for each game object, enemy game object in the enemies list, we're going to get a distance between that game object and the player game object. This is going to help us figure out what's closest. So to do that, we will get the distance and that's float dist equals vector three distance, enemy game object or transform position and the player's transform dot position. And if that distance is smaller than the range, then we can say that the range now equals the distance to make sure that next time round, only the smallest value is kept. And we'll set the closest enemy to equal the enemy game object. We then need to assign the enemy in the look at enemy scripts. So we'll go through each one and we'll say for each look at enemy script, look at enemy in look at enemies, the, the array of look at enemy scripts, we'll set the look at enemy dot enemy to equal the closest enemy that we've just discovered. We'll then call the closest enemy function in the update method and every loop through the update, it's just going to look for the closest enemy and set the closest enemy within the look at enemy script to be that enemy. So here I'm just expanding the play field a little bit, um, added an extra dinosaur. And you can see that we look at the first one. And if we walk over to the second dinosaur and get a little bit closer, instead of pointing at the first dinosaur, she's now pointing at the second dinosaur, which is exactly what we're looking for. However, this doesn't solve the problem of what happens if there are no dinosaurs and it doesn't solve how to how to get rid of the dinosaurs in the first place. At the moment, uh, our character can't shoot at the dinosaurs. So I'll create a quick shoot method. And I'm going to say that if the closest enemy is not equal to null, enemies list dot remove closest enemy. And then I will kill the enemy. I think we'll do that from the enemy script though. We'll let that handle it itself. So within the enemy script, I'm going to create a public game object, me, because it's referring to itself, and then a function void die. And what will happen then is we'll destroy the game object me when the die function is called and we'll set the dinosaur's body onto the uh, the me variable because at the moment it will set to the head of the dinosaur otherwise the head would just disappear. So then in the shoot uh, function we'll say the closest enemy dot get component enemy dot die just call that die function. Um, so if the player shoots the enemy, enemy dies nice and simple. Now we need a way to call that function shoot when the player wants to shoot the dinosaur. So we're gonna do that from a keyboard input. We're gonna say if input dot get key down key code dot left control, call the shoot method. And within the shoot method, I'm gonna have a quick print statement saying fire so we can see in the console that the fire is working when we press control. So dinosaur disappears, excellent, that's what we're looking for. However, if we're not looking at the dinosaur and press control, it still disappears. And we also get all these error messages as well. And that's because it's still looking for the game objects despite them being destroyed. So 
to make sure that the player only shoots the dinosaur if it's looking at the dinosaur, we're going to make some changes to the look at enemy script. We're going to replace the arms boolean with two different ones for a left arm and a right arm. We're going to create a public static bull can shoot, set that to false, and also a private bull for a can shoot left, can shoot right, we'll set them all to false for the time being. Now in the update method, we're going to say if it's a left arm or it's a right arm, and if can sh shoot left is equal to true or can shoot right is equal to true, then this can shoot static um, variable is going to be true. If can shoot left equals false and can shoot that right equals false, at that point the can shoot is going to equal false too. Now in the last video we made it so that the arms would point down if the enemy was outside their field of view. So instead of looking for the arms we're going to be looking for the left arm or the right arm and if it is the left arm then the can shoot variable, the can shoot left variable is going to equal false and if it's the right arm the can shoot right variable is going to equal false. Then we need to go over to where the player can see the enemy, where it is within the field of view, and we'll say that in that case, the can shoot left variable is going to be true, or the can shoot right variable is going to be true, depending on whether it is the left or the right arm. Then to prevent the code from throwing up error messages if we run out of enemies, we'll say that we'll only complete the parts within the if statements if the enemy is not equal to null. The final thing we need to do is go onto the player's arms, the arm pivots here, and set them to the left and the right arm respectively. And there we have it. Everything's working. Depending on which dinosaur she's closest to, she will point at that one, and she's able to shoot and destroy the dinosaurs only when she's pointing at them with either one or two arms. All that's left to say now is thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and check out some of my other videos, or even my game, Subspace Shortcuts, which is free to download on Google Play. I'll catch you next time.